Hi, this is Bob. Nice cold day out today, so I'm down in the basement and working on some of the ham radio things. Uh, this is my BC348 receiver, which I bought in either 72 or 73, and I really like it. They really work good for an old receiver, does an excellent job, and I use it on CW. I've got an IF output right here. Uh, that was where, where, where there was two headphone jacks there, one here, right there, and one here. So I just put one of those uh, cable TV F connectors on there, a chassis mount, and uh, it goes to a 15 picofarad capacitor which takes the signal off the IF, and I apply that to a BC453 beacon receiver. That then becomes what they used to call years ago a q fiver and uh, that q fiver narrows the bandwidth of the receiver down to about 1000 hertz and really works great on CW. One of the things on CW too, you can go to the other side of the signal because uh, since it doesn't have a, a crystal filter and all like your modern single sideband rigs have got, you can go to one side of your, of your received signal and get a tone or you can go to the other side. So if somebody's giving you QRM, you swing over to the other side of the signal you're listening to and your QRM, the guy that's QRMing you, is gone. Quite interesting. So anyways, the reason I got this out, I was working on the power supply because every once in a while the, uh, this uh, BC348 would hum really loud and go like that and I, I'm thinking that sounds like a short circuit somewhere because the light the pilot lights went out and everything quit well what I found was one of these screws was rattling around in here in fact it was this screw yeah there it is right there that one back in there had come out completely and I have to say I'm the guy that put it in there so uh, anyways, uh, I found out that the, the, uh, it does not have a nut on the other side. It, the power transformer has threaded feet on it, and I screwed that right into the threaded feet. Well, what I found out was that uh, uh, that was very loose in those threaded feet, and I didn't realize it. It's been in there all, all that time since uh, when I built the power supply, 72 I think it was. Anyhow, uh, I put a bigger screw in there. I, I re-threaded that hole with an 832 tap and put an 832 screw in and boy it's tight now. So it won't come out again. So that was my problem there. It was a short circuit in the power supply and I'm glad I found it before I burned everything up. But I wanted to show you this power supply. And one of the things that I especially wanted to talk about today, uh, you got this red yellow lead here that comes out. That's your ground lead for your for your power transformer. And you got the two capacitors. And here's the negative lead of the capacitor there and a negative lead of a capacitor here. And the thing I wanted to tell you about those is uh, on the BC348, you do not want those to go to chassis ground. I'll say it again, you do not want the ground on the two capacitors and the ground on the transformer center tap to go to chassis ground. You bring those out right here to this screw right here. And that's this brown wire right there. And why do you do that? Because in the BC348 they needed a negative 8 volts. A negative 8 volts to bias properly the audio output tube which is right there. That goes to pin 5 on the audio output tube. It also is a bias for a couple of the other tubes and I, I, I ha I'd have to look it up. I have no idea which ones they are right now. But I wanted to tell you about that because the receiver works so much better when you do connect that properly and get that minus 8 volts. Now with this one here I connected it up and that choke coil that it goes through is right here. It's the bottom two connections on the audio output transformer. This is the audio output transformer. Those bottom two connections are actually a choke coil. There's one there 
and one there. And you notice I've got a 180 ohm 1 watt resistor across there. Well, why did I do that? Because it's supposed to be a minus 8 volts. And when I check the voltage, you can check it right on this side right over here on that connection. That's where you can check your minus 8 volts. I put my Simpson 260 on there. And you know what it says in the BC348 manual? It says check that voltage with the 500 volt range. It specifically says that. Well, okay, I checked it with a 500 volt range and I got minus 8 volts and I said okay. I switched down to the 10 volt range on the Simpson 260 and I got 8 volts. So I don't know why they said use the 500 volt range, but they did. Uh, it's probably a matter of loading. Anyhow, I... Uh, I uh, put this 180 ohm resistor in there and I get my minus 8 volts just fine. It did creep up to minus 9 volts after it had been operating for about a half an hour and I thought well that's close enough that's no problem. But I was getting a minus 24 volts before and uh, that's not good. So anyway the 180 ohm resistor goes across the choke coil there and that brings it down to minus 8. Now yours may be different because you may have made a different type of power supply or something like that. So uh, anyhow, but I wanted to show you what I needed to do to bring that down and I tried uh, three or four different resistors. Uh, I just put uh, these uh, clip leads on there. This kind of clip lead I put on there, one on each side of that choke coil down there and then I just clipped on resistors until I got it to the minus 8 volts that I wanted and boy does it work nice. So I wanted to bring that out to you because that is very seldom talked about with the BC348 that you need that minus voltage. In fact I saw a BC348 I picked up uh, a really beat up one for parts uh, some time ago and when I took it out of the case somebody had installed a uh, one of those little 9 volt batteries in there uh, those little rectangular ones a 216 battery I think it is. Anyhow they'd installed that battery in there and, and soldered it up to the uh, to the uh, choke here uh, to get to the choke. Yeah. Well anyhow they had that 9 volt battery wired in there and I took it out of course and wired it up correctly and it worked fine. It already had an AC power supply in it which was nice. So I wanted to show you that on this power supply that you need to have these two filter capacitors and the center tap for the uh, transformer, all of your negative leads in the power supply need to be above ground and then connected to this screw right here and that's what gives you the bias for the tubes in the BC348. And what else did I want to say? <laughs> all I can say is this thing is I built this power supply in 1972 and it's worked all these years without a bit of trouble. Uh, except recently when I uh, when I took it out of the shelf there I decided I'd open it up I'm going to check all the tubes here in just a little bit make sure they're all good and I just was going to check this thing out and I tilted it back like that a little bit and when I did that little screw that was out that I showed you right back here that little screw rolled up against that filter capacitor or oh, was this one over here excuse me on this side rolled up against the positive on that filter capacitor and it went eh. so anyhow I'm glad I located that and got those screws taken care of so that's it I'll tell everybody out there happy holidays guys and everybody stay healthy uh, this is Bob I'll be uh, okay <laughs> usually I say 73's and good DX